Okay, we have spent quite some time already talking about how we infer a population from a sample, but how do we really test hypotheses? How do we test a null hypothesis? Well, we start by generating the distribution under the null hypothesis. In that case of the tortoises and the hares, we will see the two different distributions and an overlying null hypothesis, which is the expected distribution. If the distributions of the two datasets are very different to the supposed to be null distribution, we can clearly reject the null hypothesis as unlikely. In some of the cases, we will see that the individual distributions are very similar to the general null hypothesis that we compute from the common sample. In that case, we can reject, but more often than not, we can make a clear decision. That's why we need ways of estimating the confidence on rejecting a null hypothesis. That's why we compute something called p-value. What is a p-value? Well, a p-value is the probability that you obtain your data given that the null hypothesis is true. It's a bit confusing definition, but uh, there is another practical definition which is the same. A p-value is the probability that if you reject the null hypothesis, you are wrong. Think about it. The smaller the p-value, the better to reject the null hypothesis. And traditionally, although there is a lot of criticism, but traditionally, as a rule of thumb, we use this threshold. If the p-value is greater than 0.05, we don't reject the null hypothesis. If it's smaller, we usually reject with different levels of confidence, as you can see in the slide here. So, for instance, do men spend more time than women in the toilet? In this case, the null hypothesis will be both spend the same time. We have said some differences in the box plot, we have said some difference in the histogram, we do a test, we compute a p-value, and the p-value is 0.05377. So in that case, given the sample, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Here is some nomenclature around p-values that you'll find very useful, uh, particularly if you read uh, statistical books. The first one is, let's suppose that you reject the null hypothesis, and the null hypothesis is not correct. So you're right, right? So this is what is called a true positive. Likewise, if you don't reject the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis is true, you're also correct. This is called a true negative. But there are two types of errors. The first one is the so-called type 1 error, which happens when you reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is right. And conversely, if you don't reject the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis is not true, you are doing something called a type 2 error, or a false negative. Probably you realize that actually type 1 error is the same as a p-value. Things are starting to get interesting now. Um, you may think that you have a lot of fear in your head about distributions, about sampling, population estimates, and you're right, it's a lot of theoretical framework, but it's necessary to understand the next steps in um, statistical analysis. How we compute p-values actually is the topic of the next four lectures. Ah, and don't forget to do the assess quiz in the Moodle page. See you soon.